Guillaume, thank you so much for joining me today. Super excited to chat with you. And Guillaume, you are a partner at Triptych, which is a venture capital firm that is investing in disruptive technology companies that fuel the creator economy. Is that, is, is that a pretty good uh, kind of that's, that's summarization? Bang. That's perfect. I'm, I'm glad to be with you, my friend. It's going to be fun. Perfect, man. Perfect. All right. So to kick us off, what what's exciting for you lately? I know, I know there's just tons going on within your, your kind of area of expertise and your focus, but what is top of mind for you in terms of like, this is super exciting, super promising, um, you know, represents uh, a personal interest, a, a firm interest. What is that thing that has you super jazzed? There's so many things right now going on that are exciting and disrupting. And I think, you know, what's, what's really interesting about creative industries, like media entertainment overall, usually it's the first type of industry that is being completely disrupted by new technology. And we see it with Gen AI, we see it with XR and all that stuff. So that's super exciting. So that's, I would say, you know, both, you know, the XR, you know, spatial computing, metaverse, call it the way you want. And, you know, Gen AI are the two things that are really interesting and in different perspective on a Gen AI uh, stuff or, you know, AI overall. I think there's so many different, you know, angle like the rights, IP management, infringement, you know, monetization. There's so many things going on right now on that. On the creative aspect, it's crazy. It's a new tool that, you know, and and ants or empower new creators. So um, it's it's a, it's a cool timing. Uh, to be a VC in entertainment at, at this, you know, I would say right now. Totally. All right. So if you had to choose one cool thing that, uh, whether it be a sector, whether it be technology, whether it be a blog post, whatever, that has got you super pumped recently, what would that, what would that thing be? The recent partnership with Roblox and Meta on Oculus is quite interesting because, you know, what we often see and say about XR or VR in general, it's it's super isolating. It's not social. And what's more social than Roblox? Like Roblox is not even a game anymore. It's like like a social platform for you know Gen Z. So that you know bet from Roblox on Oculus, it's is really interesting. I think it can be a game changing uh, type of 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 move. I know we're all talking about Apple Vision Pro. I'm super excited about uh, Apple Vision Pro and their entrance in the market. I think it's going to validate a lot of things. But the Roblox partnership with Meta, I think it's really interesting. Awesome. Okay. So quick terminology uh, question here. I, 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 you know, I hear AR, VR, I yep. hear XR, which kind of is mixed reality. It, it means both, but also some people say it doesn't mean both. So like, how do you define, um, or when you're talking about AR, VR, uh, do you just say XR? I prefer I prefer to say you know just XR because I think it's it's just bringing the world to, like to 3D. You know our brain is 3D you know geared, and I think it's just 3D in general. So bringing the technology, internet, everything, computing, graphics in 3D. So for me, that's it. You know like VR, yes for sure. It's more immersive. AR, you know it's more the digital part. You know XR makes both. You can choose or whatever. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's just bringing everything to three. So what does this partnership between Meta and Roblox like signify to your firm or like you, and then also to the broader market? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of things, you know, first, you know, what's, what's missing in XR is the killer app that, you know, increase the frequency of visit by users. So they're lacking daily active users and you know that's what's missing you a lot of people bought you know their oculus like two because it was cheap they got it oh man you know once a month or once a, you know every two weeks they they put it i think you know roblox is so you know addictive in terms of you know gaming and social and it's part of the lifestyle of you know a younger generation so you know bringing this environment to XR, I think can be the killer app. I, I think it might be, you know, the, the, what's, what's missing can just uh, bring a new economy as well in terms of, you know, digital assets and, you know, uh, 
user generation content. Uh, so uh, I think for a lot of you know uh, studio cre creators, um, I think you know they should look and follow this um, you know partnership really closely. So yeah, there's always the you know because like the meme has been like oh VR is right around the corner, AR is right around the corner, you know, and it's been like. We've all been waiting for a long time. There are a lot of successful companies in this space, but like, is it more of a, cause you were mentioning Roblox social gaming. Yep. What has been, cause I feel like we have, you know, VR chat, which is, you know, uh, yep. purely kind of more social aspect versus we have a ton of great games in, in VR and whatnot. Is, is this represent to you just like the user base is so large of Roblox that now we could have this really big push into VR and get more users in there. Or like what has been the, the stoppage from a standpoint of, of uh, usability in terms of using that VR device every day. Cause like, you're right, you know, you pick it up once a month or, you know, once every week if you're like really hardcore. And uh, and yeah, it, it's just like relatively infrequent, but in order to become like an iPhone type of type of device, we need to be daily. Correct. Yeah, I think, you know, it, I think it's just people are, you know, if you look at, you know, many different reports, you know, the younger generation like Gen Z are interested, really interested about, you know, XR in general, AI. But there was no real reason to buy the headset because they had everything on their their you know current you know headset so uh, handsets. So I think that you know Roblox and you know different you know new you know Trip you know it's a great example of, of an interesting you know app um, on on you know more on fitness and wellness. So I think you need more. Frequent usage type of of, uh, of activities on on XR to 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 cross the chasm and you know become you know uh, something that you use more often. So I think you know Roblox is one, but you know I'm pretty sure there's going to be many. You know, Apple Vision Pro just announced that you know their partnership with ESPN and Disney. So that's interesting. What's going to be the type of you know streaming? What's it, is it the future of streaming? Is it the future of you know watching together? Uh, immersive watching. I'm also really interested about everyone is, you know, uh, challenging and, you know, doubting about the adoption b based on the price tag of the headset. Are they going to do a little bit like they did with the telco? Are they going to amortize the price of the headset through, you know, the OTT streaming services? So instead of, you know, you've got your Disney Plus, you know, so I don't know how much is it right now, $15 per month, and you'll have, you know, your Fifty dollar per month, but you know, with the headset, so it, and that's going to be interesting to 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 see, you know. But I think you know the saying it's right at the corner. I don't think I, I hate doing you know prediction and forecast, but I think you know the, the virtual reality and you know the, the spatial computing has been evolving really fast, really fast. More, I know people think it's a slow adoption, but I think it's really fast, and I think it's going to be. It's going to become you know faster in the next you know five years. So it's not necessarily a hardware problem. I guess it's more of a software application issue in your mind, where it's like you mentioned, like okay, there's an app where you're working out. People like to work out, you know, almost daily, or you know, I'd say four or five times a week, whatever. Like if you're you know if you're if you're you know doing that, and versus a game, maybe you want to play a game once a week. You know, maybe it's not that frequent. And then there's social activity, which ideally you you want to do daily as well. So so in your mind, it's more of like a uh, let's get more applications in there and give people more options versus like it being a hardware issue. Cause I, I've also heard opinion, opinions of people being like the headsets, you know, the battery and it's heavy and it makes you feel sick, whatever. So, but, but you're saying it's not really, that's kind of been solved. We'll laugh about those headsets. I'm pretty sure we we'll, looking back, we'll laugh at it as you know, have you seen the first, have you touched, you know, the first iPhone recently? It's huge. It's heavy. It's uncomfortable. You know, I think it's it's uh, it's it, and that's why you know th Apple Vision Pro is not the mass market product. It's not, but it's a step to uh, going into that direction. And you know, they they they're, they were smart. You know, they released their SDK before, so a lot of people will be working on you know um, some apps for you know the uh, future you know headset. So I think it's. And Oculus Trees, you know, is going to come up um, you know, with Roblox, and you know, Samsung just recently announced, you know, a major investment in, in XR. So I think it, it, we're, we're getting there. I think, but we need 
a reason to um, purchase it and use it frequently. That's that's I think what's what's missing. So Meta's approach has been very like social. It's been like, hey, let's yep. get everyone together and we'll hang out and we'll chill. And then Apple's Vision Pro, when they were doing their demonstration or their their, their, their kind of you know presentation, it was very like work oriented. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, hey, you can put the screen up here and blah blah blah. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool, but I didn't think I wasn't like blown away. But the reaction from like the mainstream quote unquote people were like, "This is amazing! Oh my god, it's so cool!" Which I I loved. I was like, I'm happy that they're so excited now too. But is is that to you? Um, going to be how uh, we, we kind of grind towards that mass adoption where it's like, hey, um, you're going to be able to do what you normally do uh, just in, in a way better, more immersive environment versus like Meta is trying to kind of alter behavior where it's like, hey, you're going to hang out with your friends on, you know, in this immersive environment. It, it, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, you know, I recently, you know, had a you know, good chat and I'm not doing name dropping here, but, you know, with Mark Petsy from uh, from Unreal and he said something that, you know, uh, I didn't really notice it, but during the Apple Vision launch, you know, when you look at it, they didn't go into the challenging stuff of XR. So they basically reproduce what's in real life and, you know, brought Disney mm-hmm. and ESPN and watching and get, getting your, you know, your food and all that stuff. So they, they didn't go into the trap of, you know, really immersive digital environment what you know what that's what meta is trying to do that's what you know others are trying to do so uh, i think they they didn't uh fell into that trap they're they're partnering with unity they want to go there they know it's going to go there but apple is really good at marketing uh really good at you know telling people that you know you need that product so i think uh for them they didn't want to scare away their future um, consumer and say, you know what, there's a new IOT product, for, you know, that fits with your Apple TV, with your, 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 um, your watch, your, t- yeah, it's just part of the family now. And you it can enhance, you know, the uh, Apple lifestyle. So that's where they decided and how they decided to, to market it. But I think at, at one point they're going to go into big time gaming and you know, immersive, Type of environment, so it's just a matter of time. Are you thinking that the adoption of the Vision Pro will be similar to like you know how we've seen iPhone and whatnot, where it launches the hardcore Apple fanboys love it and they they you know line up and whatnot and they're using it, but broadly like the iPhone took some years to really like take off into you know mm-hmm. no exponential. Is that a similar? Do you think they're just copy pasting that approach? They're, that's that's what they want. <laughs> that's that's obviously that's what they want. But they they've got you know. I think it, it won't be the, like I mentioned, I don't think it's going to be the mass adoption, right? With, with that edition, uh, I think, uh, you know, they, they've got the right partners, they've got the right approach, but they've, they've got some challenges with the, the supply chain and manufacturing and all that stuff. So, you know, they're, they're really good at sand bagging and, you know, saying, oh, did this, you know, we, we, we shoot low, but, you know, oh my God, that was w- over our expectation. I think that's what they're trying to do. Um, the, in their narrative, um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're coming with you know a second headset, you know, you know that that will be that will be tailored more for mass adoption. Well, speaking of mass adoption, like the, their their AR glasses, yeah. I, I think that that was slated to actually launch this year towards Q4, and they scrapped it. Mm-hmm. What you, you know, tell me about that. Uh, you know, I don't have any insider, even if, I, if my partner sold his company to Apple. Uh, I don't have any uh, that I can share. But um, I think, you know, it, it's that was challenging for them. And even if you look back in the past 10, 15 years, what has been the latest, most cutting edge hardware launch uh, that was mass adopted? adopted by consumer there was not a lot like tesla maybe um you know you know the iphone obviously but there's there's none so that was a that's a big deal and for the the, the way apple work it's you know they have to to be sure at 100 percent that's you know perfect design perfect product um so I think you know uh, we, we we heard about those glasses last last we heard about you know the car uh, <laughs> you know that work, that Apple is working on. So I think you know Apple is working on so many different things, um, but when they're ready, they're ready. 
So do you think that those AR glasses are coming like, you know, I'd say in the next two years or it's like, who knows? You know, I think they bet on, on, on XR. They bet on, you know, choosing, you, you, people are choosing their, the way they, they want to experience. Is it more immersive? Is it more, you know, augmented? So I would, I would be surprised they, if they get away from that and they just focus on one thing. In your mind, do, do we, is, is that the mass adoption moment where like it replaces the iPhone where everyone's wearing just lightweight glasses? I, I really don't know. And, you know, it's, we'll see what times, but, you know, it's, if you look, you know, it's funny because, you know, my girlfriend just sent me, you know, a picture at, you know, from our place in Montreal where we're living and they change the sign on the street. You know, there's a crossing path and now it's not just two human crossing path. It's humans with their iPhone, with their phone looking really? at it. Yeah. Wow. So they changed the sign. So I think it's going to turn intuitive if you think about it and see it's obviously dangerous so so maybe you know for security reason and for you know efficiencies maybe you know and if it's really well you know it suits you well and it's you know fashionably good and you know work you know more um with your your natural you know type of body experience maybe you know i, I wouldn't be surprised but that would be that would be that would be next level that would be next. So I don't, I don't think it's going to happen in the next like 10 years for sure. 10 years. Oh, well, 10 years. It won't happen. It won't happen. So wait, so you, you don't think AR glasses are going to replace the iPhone within 10 years? Nope. Really? Nope. That's so disappointing. I, I want, I wanted it. Nope. I want it today. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I think, I, it, I think it's, uh, it's going to be longer than we think. I think it's going to be longer than we think. I, I, you know, you're unfortunately absolutely, absolutely correct. There's throughout my whole career in, you know, kind of crypto, web three technology, whatever, everything is always way longer than wh whatever I think. I'm always like, oh, will it happen next year? And it just doesn't. So I, I, I agree with you there. But, you know, if, if, if Apple almost released something in 2023, you know, those being those glasses, you have to imagine that like they're relatively close, you know, we'll call it two, three years out. And then we'll say two, three years more for the kind of mass adoption. It's got to be within... It's got to be before 10 years, no? Yeah, but the thing is, you know, it, what we are looking as, you know, VC and I'm looking as an investor, it's, it's the collateral effect on others as well, on the category. So I'm really interested to see when Apple Vision Pro, what's going to happen to, you know, HTC, what's going to happen on Meta. And if it brings the category all up, um, I might, you know, you know, change my forecast. I might change, and I, I think it's going to help everyone. I really think it's going to help. Everyone. I think it's it's changing. I love cross crossing like cross the chasm book. It's, it's just a fantastic book, and I think it's you know you're uh, you and I are tech enthusiasts. We love it, and you know early adopting you know new technology, but you know going towards you know the mass and you know getting your bank account to be on. Uh, on glasses and, you know, getting all the geo, um, you know, fencing and the security based out of it and the data protection and, you know, the, the, just a cloud computing, the edge serving server, you know, there's so many things that has to happen in terms of infrastructure. Um, I think it's, it's going to be long, a little bit longer, but, you know, we, we're going to make, I, I don't say, you know, it's not fine and it's, it's, it's disappointing. I think it's, it, it, it's going to be, it's going to go by steps and there, it, each steps will be huge steps. All right. So 11 years. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, all right. So what are the use cases of, uh, or what are the, in your opinion, like the coolest or best or most interesting use cases of AR VR today? I think, you know, fitness, you know, apps are pretty cool. Do you like that because of the social aspect because of the immersion or what what is what is kind of that no because i feel you know i, I feel i'm in the game and i feel the, that my yeah and my buddy has to be has to play uh you know an active role in the immersive experience when i'm doing you know a vr or ar experience so i feel fitness wellness are good you know there's a great you know montreal company tri called tripura they're doing you know breeding uh trip like i mentioned which is more you know meditation and you know wellness type of 
and you know activities but you know there's you know many you know different you know supernatural are pretty it's pretty cool because you know you're getting active so i i like those apps i'm not, i'm not you know big gamer so full disclosure um so you know i'm not you know really doing it and i think it's really cool as well for location based entertainment you know there's a great uh, exhibit called uh the infinite it's you know partnership with nasa time and felix and paul which is a great studio and it's just amazing you're going into the spatial satellite and you you're you're visiting it and you you walk around and all that stuff so that's one of the amazing experience that i you know I can, can you do that at your home or do you have to go to a physical uh, location yeah, to, to do that there's there's two version there's one you know on you know your oculus store that you can do but there's one you know really glorified type of experience that you can do with other people you know there's like 40 oh, 50 really cool. people that you can do and you can see them as they go through and you can see their art beating and all that stuff so it's pretty cool and they, they, they did another thing there's one pretty cool uh stuff you know i did with um it's, what's um alejandro Imiratu, the guy that did that babel ba uh, babel and did you know uh had multiple movies Oh, you know, Oscar winner. He did, you know, some some sort of an experience with with uh, VR that you had to remove your your uh, your shoes. You go into you know uh, cold sand, and you're basically uh, an illegal immigrant trying from Mexico trying to. Uh, cross the border in U.S. Wow! And there's you know SWAT team coming, and you know they try to to, to you're really immersed in their life experience which is troubling believe me one of the best thing i've done it's super cool yeah so so i guess it's uh health and wellness gaming and immersive experiences yeah for me but it's really personal i know you know a lot of people are doing vr the the son of my partner bert this big into gorilla like the, the gorilla stuff you know he's doing you know the social gorilla stuff you know big time um, you know, a lot of people are doing, you know, beat sabers and, you know, big competition and stuff like that. So I, th I think everyone has their own, you know, experience with, you know, with, with VR. And I think there's two less people that, you know, experience it. That's, I think it's going to gain in popularity when, you know, there's going to be more uh, mass adoption. What's going to be more, uh, you know, more popular, um, I guess, faster? Will it be AR or VR? A lot of people are betting on AR because Apple is betting big on AR and it's more natural, I would say, you know, to having the natural and add, just adding digital. And I think in movies, I've seen, we've seen more of it, you know, and application of it, it's, it's more predictable, you know, you can add that, you put it into, you know, tourism can put it into, you know, your car and stuff like that. But VR has an appeal. I really like the immersive uh, part and, the, the travel and journey you've got through it, but it's it's the the biggest challenge is you it's hard to stay immersed long time. So it's after 20, 30 minutes. So uh, I would vote on that uh, on both. So that's why I think you know that's 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 why you know Apple did the the right choice of and I, Oculus will do the same. Believe me, uh, my, my word, they they're gonna do the same. So I think they they'll do the the right ad set will do both. Yeah, I see it a bit like um, VR is a bit like playing video games where hey, I'm gonna go do this action that's kind of taking me into this different world and you know really exciting, very immersive, very you know cool, whatever. And then there's the augmented reality, which is kind of like I'm gonna I don't know use my iPhone when I go to the museum to like get more information or whatever. It's like that's like not a good example, but yeah. it's more of like making my day to day experience better through technology. Awesome. Okay, so what are you thinking about uh, Web three? And you know, this is like anywhere from crypto token to blockchain as infrastructure to NFTs. What are your thoughts on Web three broadly? Oh my god, um, <laughs> I'm still skeptical. Okay, I, I'm I'm on that I'm on that side. So, uh, and you'll see if you look at your you know, our port codes, we didn't invest in any of the web of Web three. Not by lack of interest. I think you know the data ownership. You know, at the foundation of it makes total sense. You know, and I get it. Um, you know, get the de decentralization, and I get it. I didn't see any application that cannot be done in Web two. You know, that's the biggest, and, and that's what missing for me. And the other thing is on data privacy and data ownership. It's just scared that people doesn't really care. 
people are sharing data like private data more and more and you can you imagine with those headsets you'll share what you're seeing where you're looking you'll share you know I, you know your pulse your, your people are sharing so much stuff i so i get it i get why we want we want to do it and you know those big tech company are milking our data with money but i'm i'm, I'm just scared that you know people doesn't really care so that's 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 where i'm sitting but I hope at one point you know, there's going to be a good case study that that will work, and because I think it's it's needed, and I, I kind of go towards that that way of approaching our uh, our data. So, but, but that's my my opinion. Totally, yeah. No, I think that the very valid criticism slash concerns around Web three. I think that the amount of capital that has been poured into Web three versus what's been produced is pretty lopsided. Uh, I, I will totally agree with that. And I see a Web3 as having specific applications in terms of like, all right, if you're on the blockchain side, it's more so financial related transactions where it's like, or financial infrastructure, where if, if we can now trade assets on a blockchain, it's more efficient in terms of auditing, in terms of the transferring of the actual asset and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, that's on like, you know, blockchain info, or of course payments as well. And then on the NFT side, it's very like uh, simple, where it's like, this is a product that people, it's like a digital product. It's like, hey, I sell t-shirts. I sell these digital items in a, in a video game. Okay, you can now sell NFTs, which can be used for, you know, whatever purpose, but it's just like another good. So it's monetization. And then also for like customer engagement. So like, we, hey, we can now drop this asset to people or send this asset to people, almost like an email. And hopefully they'll, you know, check out our brand or, you know, check us out in some, in some fashion. Uh, and then also the, like the customer insights that you get from looking on public wallets, you can say, oh, this Customers are quite active. Uh, we want to target them, or um, you know, we want to uh, you know they see the average balance of our of our users, et cetera, et cetera. So the, I see that I see that there are use cases that people are are utilizing, uh, but it's specific and it's not as we're not there yet in terms of where I thought it was going to be. I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be everything's going to be decentralized, one hundred percent. Like people care about ownership and self sovereignty, and and uh, you know, my heart tells me. Like hopefully one day, but in reality, like people don't actually care. Ten, You're right. Like 10 or like giving years. up their pulse. Yeah. Yeah. 11, 11, <laughs> maybe 11. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So, so I, I, I think that um, what you're seeing is fair, but I also, uh, you know, obviously I, I'm more biased cause I, I'm, I come from that, from that space specifically like OG Bitcoiner, but you know, my views have evolved significantly in, in the sense of, Oh, not everyone actually cares about ownership or decentralization. Uh, just like a, a core few, few people do. Um, but that being said, I, I do think that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, already shown that it has adoption. It's going to continue to get adopted. Uh, it's just a matter of like continuing to build products that people want to use. Yeah. I think, you know, web three, you know, I'm a hundred percent with you, you know, I can see the application, even, you know, I'm a big music fan and, you know, working in music. Can you imagine like, there's so many copyrights infringement and, you know, smart contract can really help this. So, you know, I, I really see how it can help. I think it's the web three is really at the, the, the tipping point of, you know, looking for the, you know, outside from bitcoins, you know, how blockchain can be easily adopted. So I, I, and you know, the regulation are, you know, getting in place and a lot of stuff, you know, there's favorable, you know, uh, uh, decision that has been made, you know, by FTC, you know, about last week or you know, this week. So I think, you know, Web3 will regain credibility. It's, you know, it's, it's always like that, you know, hype cycles and stuff like that. So, you know, that was a big one last, like in the past two years. I think it's it's rough times. But, you know, for an investor, I would say that's probably the best time to look at it. Um, because, you know, the, the real foundations are there and the best and scrappy entrepreneur that still believe and survive, as they will, they will have, you know, the right technology, the right team and the, the right vision. Totally agree. And I also think that the the number of tokens uh, that have been launched that actually don't make sense is too high. I mean, everyone said that forever, um, but I think that that's also, it's extremely distracting from the underlying product. If like there's this token that doesn't actually maybe make sense within that product or protocol and people are, um, you know, focused on number go up versus like, oh, what is this thing actually doing? So I think that going forward, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting regulation that, that, that's happening now. And uh, once we have that rule set in place, people will be able to enter, uh, you know, the markets in a more meaningful manner and less um, less focus on just like, hey, let's launch this token, and maybe the token will go up a lot, and we can like, you know, make a ton of money. 
and hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll get farther away from that, which I think has been pretty prevalent over the past, you know, few years. And I think there's a job as well at the, of, you know, the industry, like people like you to simplify as well, the message, because I think it's complex for people that don't understand really how it's work and all that stuff. And I don't know if real people really care about how it works. You know, I read, you know, on the report, you know, uh, I think, you know, 80 more, over 80% of Americans, North Americans think that when you put money in banks, they put your money into, uh, you know, certain, like you've got your closet and, you know, they, they, they put, you know, your money into that. They don't know that they take your, your money, they invest your money, you know, they get interest and all that stuff, you know, it's used for loans. They don't get it. And the bank doesn't like, doesn't tell you that because it's too complex. It's too complicated. So they really simplify saying, hey, you know, put that, put it, put the money with us, you know, it's, it's safe. And, you know, they were able to, to build, you know, trust. Uh, but I don't know if people knew what they're doing with their money. They'll be scared. I'm 100% sure. So I think that's a little bit, you know, the, the problem with blockchain is too much explanation on, you know, how it works and, you know, benefits and all that stuff. And it, it needs to be more simple in the way that, that we're, we're talking about it to, 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 to consumers. Yeah, I totally agree. It, well, it's like, it's like any product, like, how does this make my life better? And that, that's like whatever an ask is like, how does this make me better, faster, stronger and whatever? And if it doesn't do that, then they're like, okay, well, I, I don't really care. Um, so I, I agree with you on that. But um, yeah, uh, maybe this next cycle, maybe this next cycle, people will uh, build more responsibly. And, and, you know, the SEC will finally put in a rule set that hopefully is not crazy. I mean, Gary Gensler's proven to be pretty anti Web3, so we'll see. But I feel like with that Ripple case, uh, there's making some small headway. I know there's a lot more wins that have to be uh, had in order to actually get some, get to a good spot. But I feel like we're like grinding there. So. Positive, positive. All right, so AI, of course, this has been big topic for every, everyone. Um, I, and it's it's tough to even say like, what are your thoughts on AI? Because it's such a like, it, like where do you even start? So I guess which, in your opinion, which industry is AI going to impact the soonest in a in a major major way? I think consumer product, media, and entertainment for sure creator economy huge uh, we, we can see it right now like already you know i don't want to preach for you know what what i'm doing but i think it it's going to be a huge, preach preach so it's gonna it's gonna be a huge disruptor and it is already a huge disruptor we see like like getty image went over stable diffusion and core you know we saw you know the, the warrell versus prince uh decision so and the strike in hollywood you know ai is really at the, at the core, the send, but not, I don't want to say, I, want, I don't say at the core, but they're, they're part of the negotiation. I feel like it wasn't at the core and now it's at the core, I feel like. It's not the core from my understanding because, you know, what they're requesting, it's basically a, a, you know, a research, you know, a report and blah, blah, blah. And they're going to base that after, after that, you know, uh, on recommendation, but, but it's still there. It's there. So I think it's going to, you know, you know the, the first... The, the biggest, you know, uh, you know, I'm going through it. It's lawyers. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of work, and they're gonna do a lot of money because laws are going to change big time. Business model will be completely destroyed and change. IP protection and just the way we're approaching IP. You know, just if you look at. You know, in US, if it's coming from, you know, Gen AI, you can't copyright it. But in UK, you can. Um, you know, there's subtlety on, on what I'm saying for sure. But, you know, it, I think it's it, there's going to be a lot, a lot of regulation, a lot of, uh, of work for, for lawyers and government. But, you know, what's most exciting for me, obviously, it's, you know, just, you know, the creative work. And what's I feel it's really funny, it's, you know, if you read back, uh, you know, two or three years ago, you know, or the, the, the past, you know, hype cycle of AI, everyone was like, okay, it's going to be more, it's, it's going to help productivity efficiently, but it will never replace creativity. And as you can see now, that's boom, that's right into creativity, like stable diffusion, mid journey, chat GPT, obviously, you know, but it's, it's changing the game and, you know, it can create cool stuff. 
really cool stuff. So for any platform doing, you know, user generated content or um, any, you know, even, you know, triple A gaming studio, they will have to de decrease dramatically their cost because, you know, it's going to be a huge revolution way of processing and doing stuff. So the supply and the processes from, you know, imagination, creation, production, distribution will completely shrink and change. So that's going to be really interesting, really interesting. Okay. So before digging deeper into that, I, I want to just kind of ask you about a framework of how I think about these different technologies or not even a framework, just like how I kind of think about them, I guess. So AR and VR to me is like making a more immersive, immersive internet. Web3 is more of a financialization revolution. And then AI is, is for me, like a labor revolution. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, um, it's like say. suddenly you have like a hundred interns that can like go do whatever quite quickly for you. Uh, is that like, how do you, how do you view these separate technologies, um, as like categories overall? Yeah, I think you're right. I think, but I think, you know, XR is the, 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 the next computing revolution. I think that's wait. So, so explain that. Explain that. But I mean, you know, everything like everything will change. You know, if you for from graphics, from com, like speed, from latency, from um, you know, you know, data collection, data, you know, um, uh, processing. It's it's gonna change everything because it's so demanding on you know on on data and on speed and on bandwidth latency. So I think it's gonna change completely. You know the the computing, so compute. It's 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 a new revolution, the spatial computing. Um, Web three for me, yeah, it's a, it's it, you you say finance. I, I might go a little. I think if it could win and be adopted, it's more on identity and uh, ownership. I think I get the wallet. I get it. I get having you know your data and giving permission on you know we're trying to do that with cookies and blah blah but it doesn't really work people are just allowing you know, you know what i mean it's, it's nothing but i think it's more identity ownership revolution that can like happen that. and ai you, you productivity and efficiency i think efficiencies i think productivity wise it's, it's, it's incredibly you know it's it's an industrial revolution Totally. Okay. So you mentioned, well, it's, it's actually funny you mentioned lawyers, like in terms of like which industry can be like impacted them. first. Cause yeah, we, we love lawyers. We love our lawyers, of course. Um, every single technological revolution, lawyers are always just like hitting it big. So be a lawyer probably is like mm -hmm. the advice. But um, I think that you also said media entertainment yep. and um, you said that at the top of the conversation, you're like, it's one of the first industries to be impacted by new technology. Why is that? Is like the incentive so, so large for people to adopt this new technology. Cause like, cause people like what's unchanging in this world of always changing technology. It's like human nature. People always want to be entertained. They always want to have fun. They want to compete. They want to socialize, whatever. So is that why is like the reward so big that they like, we have to be on the cutting edge because if we do this, we're going to earn so much money. First it's, it's not tangible. So I think it's, uh, you know, a movie or music track or, you know, arts or whatever, you know, yes, for sure. There's live entertainment, all this stuff, but you know, it's not tangible. So that's number one. Second, you know, you, people want access it, uh, easily. So that's, that's what they want to do. Um, and it's just pure, uh, emotional, I would say consumption. People are just so connected with, you know, media and entertainment. So I think uh, in technology allows you to be, you know, connected in a faster, more efficient way. And you think you're getting closer to it. So I, I think, you know, not only you're watching Dune, but you can follow Zendaya on, you know, social media and all that stuff. So it's just part of the, it's, so I think that's why not a really good um, way of thinking about it, but people are not valuing, uh, they don't put this, the, 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 the right value on entertainment. As, as in they're undervaluing it? Or, yeah, they or, are. Or, or over. Yeah, they are. They are under, you know, they, they don't want to pay for it. P people are paying, you know, it's, you know, 
take it, you know, uh, as a grain of salt because, you know, people are, you know, subscribe, they subscribe to Netflix and all that stuff. But, you know, can you imagine like $14? You've got all those amazing movies and series and all that stuff. The business model doesn't work. I get it. I get it. And, you know, that's why, you know, the there's going to be a new hybrid, you know, advertising with subscription with it. And there's going to be consolidation in it. And, you know, Spotify as well, you know, you know the, the, the artists are not, you know, they don't get the, the, the right royalties, on my opinion. I don't think the industry were good at, you know, value, at putting the right value on, you know, creative works. And so that's why, you know, people are trying to just to find ways to, to get access to it and consume, binge it. And, you know, and technology, you know, the new technology helped them to do it. So I want to dig deeper into kind of AI future of entertainment, but... Before doing that, like you mentioned, you know, the people like, for, for example, Spotify, the artists are getting paid so little for their, for their music. Now, for example, these, these writers in Hollywood, they're, they're striking because they don't get paid enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm like, I can't help but think that that's not going to change. Like, I, I don't see, I don't see these uh, celebrities, singers, creatives, whatever. I don't see them making more money in this future that we're headed towards. I see them making less because it's going to be so uh, easy to create AI music, AI, mm -hmm. AI shows, AI, whatever that like their, their revenue is going to decrease potentially. Is, is that wrong? No, you're totally right. I think you're totally right. I think, you know, there's a democratization of content first, you know, if you want to ask, you ask, you know, Gen Z, uh, what they want to do in life influencer is number one. So they want to be content creator, and it's easy now to do it, and it's going to be easier with AI and all those, you know, technologies we're all, you know, talking. It's just the fall of, you know, an era, golden era, and business model, and that benefit many. But I think it's going, it's going to, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. I think if we want to talk concretely, I don't think the strike will be uh, negotiated and, you know, and will end soon. I think it's going to be a long long negotiation really oh yeah interesting 100 percent. i think it's going to be really long i think you know they're Why? Be because there's such a mismatch like the studios are basically like hey listen we can get your writing almost you know for pennies on the dollar now with ai and the, the writers are like no we earned x amount before and or, you know we want to earn more than that now uh, so is, is there such a mismatch in, in expectations i think it, you know right now the biggest you know challenge with the strike now is the residual um, so and it's just because, you know, usually, you know, a movie is shot, you're at the, you know, the cinema, the theater. And after that, you know, there's the DVD. And after that, there's, you know, SVOD, you know, you can, you know, purchase it. And after that, there's, you know, specialized channel that you can subscribe for, you know, a certain amount. And after that, you know, it's, you know, broadcast TV. That was that. That was that for, you know, 20, 25 years. And it works well. Everyone was happy, you know, that's so easy to follow. And came, you know, all those technology and OTT platform, that changed everything. And now it's direct on OTT, not even theater. Oh, they, they brought back the theater and all that stuff. So there's no more residual. It's And there's no metrics on streamers that, you know, can be benchmarked because nobody's sharing their, their viewership metrics. Paramounts are keeping them, Disney are keeping them, uh, Netflix are keeping them. Yeah, for sure, you know, the stakeholders got them, but nobody's got it. So, and in the past old model, everyone had their own, no, no, everyone was sharing their, the same metrics for advertising and all that stuff. So it's, it's just, it's just a complete diff, like paradigm has changed and business model has changed and the, People in place, the owners has changed. It's not studios anymore who are owning those big, you know, companies and uh, you know, working in the media and entertainment. Entertainment. The big tech, Amazon, is owning MGM. You know, Netflix, a tech company. So it's just like, it's 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 just imploded. It's uh, you know, I heard someone saying it's the Hollywood civil war. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> so so. So we'll, we'll have to look at it, you know, and, and, and see what's what's coming up. And, you know, the music industry is looking at it because it's going to have impact on them and, you know, sports as well. So but I, I, I weirdly think sports is like in a in terms of AI in a great spot because humans like are, are going to have to compete. So like that's actually safe. Um, but 
I mean, the movies and music industry, like it's going to be crazy. It like, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to look radically different in five years from now. I, I think I, I, it's a little short time frame. Maybe, maybe it's going to be longer, but it's going to be, it's going to be completely changed. Believe me, yeah. like people, I, even if they say they're, they're fighting against it, but I really think Tom Cruise will license his voice. Totally. Yeah. It's going to happen. And, you know, there's going to be a movie, you know, sh- yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah. You, 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 you know, can you imagine Mission Impossible I, 95? Oh, you, no, easier than that. You, you do, you know, an animation movie. You don't need to shut anything. And you put the totally. script of, you know, the pig, then, you know, the voice of the pig is Tom Cruise. And you put the script and yeah. here we go. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Can you right. imagine? It's crazy. Right. So, okay. So I see that we are, we're currently in, but it's not well, like, Actually, we're, we're, we're kind of nowhere compared to where we will be, but we're in this like content tsunami. Like these, uh, we invested in, in, in a company that's an AI, it's, it's an anime social and creative hub, and they have an AI generator for making anime. And uh, they've got like 50,000 daily actives, and um, they're creating like 450,000 plus images per day, per day. I know the company. Right? And I'm like, that, sorry? I know the company. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty cool. It it's is. Pretty cool. It is. Uh, and, and like they are, uh, it, it just, it's just so much content, right? It's so much. And that's one company. And this is a small company, you know, it, it's like launched, you know, last year in October, right? So it's, it's not like a big company whatsoever. So I'm like, there's going to be, and this is images at, at some point in the future, there'll be video mm-hmm. and, you know, we'll be watching because right now there's a like gifts. It takes a few minutes to generate gifts, but we have like five to 10 second gifts. Then you'll be making five minute videos, 10 minute videos, YouTube, whatever, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But like, there's going to be so much content out there. There's not enough people to like consume the content and even like understand like what's good, uh, you know, because you can't review everything. So, what what world are we heading in in terms of like the entertainment industry when there's like literally too much? Because even today, I guess you could argue that there's already too much today. Oh, for sure. But at least I feel like I feel like people do see most things. Like if there's a new movie, like someone's going to watch it and say it's pretty good, pretty bad. Well, what happens in that future where it's just so much, it's, it's too much for, for all humans on, our, uh, on Earth? That's why, you know, IP is going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be gold. Yeah, for sure. Because if yeah. you look at the music industry, you know, there's 10,000 new songs uploaded on Spotify every day. Like, wow. It's crazy. It's crazy if you think about it. So, um, but the one that are making the most money is the heritage and legacy and, you know, big star and all that stuff. And who's owning the rights now? It's yes, publisher and labels, but mostly now funds like hypnosis and, you know, big funds that invested uh, and bought, you know, catalog. And now they're, you know, monetizing, mm. monetizing, you know, all of those that, you know, through streaming, obviously, but sync as well with, you know, movies and video games and all that stuff. So I think it's going to happen the same thing in the in the movie and series and content so there's going to be 10,000 maybe you know new shorts and and content you know audio visual content you know on youtube and different platforms but there's going to be ip owners that will make a lot of money by licensing uh you know their 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 big ip and you know people you know will buy it and i think it's going to it's it's you can see now that it's it's happening in the video games. Video games like AAA studios are struggling. Ubisoft is struggling making money with just games. So they're licensing to do movies like they're you know Gran Turismo is coming. You know Last of Us. You know was a great series. So they're, they're finding new ways of you know uh, of monetizing the IP. So I think it's really trying to work art on your IP Bible and, you know, creating value community around your IP. So it, that's, that's going to be the, the key point. Very interesting. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, if I own the rights to Harry Potter, I'm like jumping for joy right now. Cause I'm like, man, perfect. Right in time for the AI revolution. Right. Um, but I think, uh, I think it's also alternatively the best time to create a new IP because you have these, you know, global platforms of distribution, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. And the cost of generating content and creating IP is just hundred X cheaper than, than what it was. So it's like, yeah, I just see this, this wave tsunami of so much content coming at us. And I'm like, man, we're going to even need like AI solutions to figure out like what's good. Like you're going to have to like review the content and be like, this is, this is people will like this, like, you know, sh- you know show it front page or whatever. So um, no, it's very, very exciting. Okay. So um, chatbots, I've been obsessed with chatbots the past, I don't know, few months now. And um 
I am like, I'm going so deep in this rabbit hole. I'm like, I think that so people are already dating their chatbots. Like that's been a thing for a while, but I'm like, man, you know, I could have a chatbot coach that's saying, Andrew, do one more rep, do one more rep, keep going. Or like a chatbot friend who's like, Hey man, go talk to the girl at the bar, like man up, like don't, don't be such a wimp, you know? Um, and just like urging me to do good things. But then alternatively, I could have a chatbot who's like, you know, you know, urging me to do bad things. I don't think that would make uh, business sense. So I hope that that's like not a, a behavior that's common. Um, but you have to imagine like the, everyone's going to have a chatbot. It's going to be, you know, a voice in your earphones or whatever that you can talk to normally, like how we're talking now. And the influence that these things are going to have over us is going to be crazy, I think. And, and I also think that, um, which is dangerous. I also think that it, there's so much at stake with that because it's influencing people's decisions. It can be like, hey, buy this jacket off Amazon. You mentioned you were cold. and like, here's a cool jacket. I'm like, okay. Um, right? You know, exactly. I'm like, cool. Like, yeah, you know, that sounds good. But like, yeah, I think so much is at stake. I feel like Apple, you know, uh, Google, et cetera, are going to be the ones who are controlling that aspect as well, which means that they're like, they just like, control like everything about our lives, you know? Um, so anyways, sorry, that was a lot. But what do you think about chatbots and what do you think about their their future? I would even put you know, the word avatar on it you can throw it because I think, you know, everyone will get their avatar. I've got four kids, okay? And, you know, I've got, you know, they're from six to 12. And, you know, if you look at Snap and all that stuff, it's it's on their own image. It's, you know, avatar. So I think, you know, there's an, yeah, emoji and all that stuff. So I think it's the, it's it's getting there. And there's one company, I, I will tell you how big I think it's going to be. There's one company called Snack, I believe. It's a dating app out of Vancouver and um, what they're doing, it's basically you've got your own avatar you, that fuel the himself or itself from you know your data and all that stuff and you can t- think about like talk to, to it and all that stuff. But what they're doing like that avatar is scouting you know dates for you when you're not on the app and when you come when you come up, you know, to the app and you're like, oh, you know, I'm feeling, you know, I want to have just a dinner and just spend in good company and all this stuff. Like, okay, but there's this profile, this profile, this profile. So Avatar are, you know, scouting on each other before, you know, the real relationship. Uh, crazy and scary, but, uh, you know, I think that's where it's going. Okay, so so my <laughs> AI avatar is going to get to know me. Yep. The AI avatar gets to know my wife and then they end up finding each other in the metaverse, mm-hmm. these two avatars, yeah. the two AI, AI agents. They start talking. They realize, hey, they're pretty compatible. Let's set them up on an actual date. Is that is that what you're talking about? Correct. That's incredible. That's so cool. <laughs> see, see, like, like that to me is very, like, incredibly powerful and so good and so cool for humanity. Um, and so that's a very, very positive aspect. And like that, that I love. So I think, I think the potential, just like all technology, the the, the pros uh, broadly outweigh the cons. And so. That, that's an amazing use use case, and um, yeah, I, I just think being a being a good friend who you can talk to and share you know your problems with, and they can give you good advice or whatever. Like it's just all good. But then I'm like, man, you know, they could also be like, hey, uh, vote for this crazy person, you know, and put that person in office. I'm like, oh god, like you know, I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty wild. Do you have that type of problem in the U.S.? Or okay, I don't know. Let's go to. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. Our presents are great. I don't know what you're talking about. But, uh. I think it's going to be assistant. I, I won't even say, you know, chat button anymore. I would say there's going to be your personal assistant. And, and you know, even the, like the retail world, it's it's going to completely change because, you know, there's, you're going to have, you know, advisors and stuff like that. I, I would even go so far as to say like chat, you know, I, I just say chat, but just like for ease of, yep. ease of talking about it. But um, they're, they're, they're here now. And I think they're going to have the biggest impact on society within the next like three years. I think, I think within a short period of time, because we're already seeing with like replica character with mm-hmm. Chai, people are getting these things. And when they alter their algorithms or alter their personalities of the chatbots, people freak out. Right. Yeah. You know? So um, I'm like, this is going to be really, really impactful. I feel like not enough people are talking about it, but um, I don't know. I- I'm-, I'm super excited. But just just look at you know Ready Player Me like the way that the company is built you know it's pretty cool like you know say API and you know now you know I know, I know a company called Playfit that's it's like a they're they're leveraging you know an avatar for you know fitness and all that stuff and your avatar is you know encouraging you to do more and more and all that stuff and you can 
win and gain and you know you know digital assets and so all that stuff so i think you know i think it's obviously going to be there and um i think you know the you know gen uh, gen z you know it's already there so totally so defensibility though because i'm like man um you know how do you build a defensible because i was i was thinking about that in the aspect of uh you know this this future this revolution we're seeing in media entertainment, but then also, you know, with AI and everything, because I'm like, man, if you can create a movie instantaneously, like who, how do you make a defensible company? And then going over to chatbots, I'm like, well, it, you would theorize that whoever has the most data can probably make the best chatbot. Therefore, it's going to be like Apple, Google, whatever. Uh, but then, um, yeah, h- h- you know, who wins in, in the in the age of AI? How do you create a defensible business? I feel like it's going to be the megacorps are going to own like everything. And they're all going to be, you know, in the matrix, like sucked in there are little tubes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because we, you know, when the big Gen AI, you know, uh, cycle started, we just gather at you know Bird Place, my partner, and we said, you know, how did we do diligence on you know AI company because everyone will leverage AI, and that's you know what we came up saying, you know we'll have to analyze each company by removing AI and say, what is the added value? What are they bringing? What's the mode bit? Like if we put, you know, AI on the side and that's, that's, that's the company that I think will win. AI will be everywhere. So uh, if someone is pitching me a new algorithm right now, I don't even, I don't even go there. Like it's, 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 or you know, starting a company in AI now, and you know, I'll say, you know, so a company can say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna work on more intelligent NPC in games. Forget it. It's, you're too late. It's like I think it's, uh, it's not game over. That's not what I'm saying. But I think it, the the one that are leveraging AI to uh, get more. Um, value add will, will will be the one that will win. So you're basically so you you think the defensibility of a business in the age of AI is like pretty minimal. It's basically like the big if you're the bigger you are, the the, the more well off you are in terms of this, this revolution. But I'm, if I'm putting you know D tech aside because D tech is really another ball game, but um, yeah, it's going to be software company is going to it's going to be challenging, really challenging to identify the moat because you know AI is is almost open source like you said then you know it's you know people can leverage it then you know you can replicate yeah i can even ask the ai to code can you code something like and then they're going to code it so it's it's really disrupting and you know like you mentioned what's going to be the most you know uh, interesting i guess you know law lawyers and you know ip i think that's that's the thing there's going to be a revolution in ip big time because that's the value which is funny because it's like a it's like a, a made up law or I mean you know it's a thing that humans created to be like hey I wrote this story therefore I own this IP no one can touch it if you want to touch it you got to pay me um, which is funny that it's almost like an artificial barrier that we've put in uh, the no. IP owners won't let it go that's the thing uh, if mm-hmm. they won't let it go they'll, they're gonna fight big time totally. and US is gonna fight big time as ever you know if you look at you know against China so I think you know, IP is the is the gold? So I think it's um, uh, it's just going to be interesting how how the how you know I, like the laws are going to be adapted to, to to Gen AI and to AI in general. Oh man, I mean we could keep riffing on AI forever, but but I, I want to talk to you about a simple question, a simple thing. What is the metaverse? Oh my god, you know metaverse for me it's it's the it's same. It's the it's treaty for me. You know I know 3D. a lot of people are think thinking your know, metaverse is immersive with web3 or web3 is part of it then you know it's more you know of, of an identity and all that stuff for me it has always been you know the the, the internet in 3d for me it's about making the internet more real tangible interactive and experiential it's like how do we make the internet all around us and really come to life because right now the internet's very like you know kind of 2d and like yep. simple so so I, I would i would agree with you that spatial or 3d is a very big aspect, but I, I, I think, uh, I think that there's, there's a little more to it, but I'm also thinking about in terms of like, how am I talking to an investor? How am I talking to a founder about, you know, what the metaverse and, is? Cause it's, it's such a, it's like saying internet, it's such a broad category. That, that was a problem with the word actually. It's, you know, everyone has their own interpretation 
of it. And th that's why I think the, the bubble at one point just explode. And, but same as web three, I think, you know, it's, you look at, you know, the foundation of it, you know, you know spatial computing, 3d computing, computer vision. I think there's a lot there and it's a really good time to look at it as an investor. I hope it's going to be, you know, my exit and XR is going to be way faster than 10 years. Um, but I think, you know, the adoption will be so you know, that's going to scale at, you know, different, you know, timing and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think, you know, the, the metaverse, you know, uh, was a little bit more too futuristic and sci-fi and now we're getting back to more, you know, a, a scientific and technologic approach. And I think that's good. And, and I, you know, I like to dream, don't get me wrong, but you know, I think it's, it's more, you know, grounded. Totally. Awesome. Okay. Before jumping in the closing questions, I should have asked you at the top of the hour, but um, tell me about Triptych. Like how did you start Triptych and uh, you know, what, what do you guys look at? What are you guys excited about? Tell me about your, you mentioned your partner sold, sold his company to Apple. Just tell me about like, how did you start it and tell me all about it. Fast forward, you know, I'm a, I'm a big music fan. So I worked in the music label first. And after that, live entertainment brought me to work for the family office of Aguilé Liberté, who's the founder of Cirque du Soleil. He started off, you know, uh, with the idea of an incubator helping uh, startups in the creative industry. So I was the general manager. I did that for three years. Um, at one point, I saw that there was a you know, lack or gap in the funding at the seed stage. A lot of fintech, clean tech you know, multiple type of, you know, VCs, but nothing, you know, specialized in, in, in that category. So I said, you know, let's, let's work on, on the thesis and a model. And I met, you know, Shal, which is one of my partner and he was, you know, he's a lawyer by formation, worked all his life in VC. So he worked with me as a consultant on, on, you know, the, the model and the thesis. And he was so convinced. He said, you know, I wouldn't put my money. I want to be part of it and the journey. And he said, you know, you should look at it, you know, you're really good. You know, I, I, would, I was not feeling I had, you know, everything it needs, but you know, I've got an operational background and all that stuff. So I said, you know, let's, let's go. And Bert was a friend of, uh, of Shal. He was coming back from Silicon Valley. We worked three years at Apple. As I mentioned, he was, he worked on Vervana, like a totem, the, the, the product that you work on. It's an XR headset hardware for you know, multiple years. And in, in 2017, he won Best in Show at you know, CES and sold it to And he came back, he was doing some angel investment, but wanted to do more like in a more structured way. So he joined, he joined us and we start raising. And that was hell of a run. That was hard, really hard. Um, but we closed the fund $40 million in June of last year. And uh, we're, we're still doing some a little bit of fundraising, but we're actively deploying. And we wanted to take the lead. So we were not into a sprint per approach. It's more, you know, four or five deals per year and really tech for the creative industry. So picks and shovels, not like infra tools, uh, marketplaces. And that's what we do. And, you know, we had the positive res like response from, you know, the, the startups. We received over, you know, a thousand new opportunities in the first year. And, you know, community of VC and investor like yours and others, you know, the Bitcraft Convoy, all the, you know, the, these guys are sharing a lot, you know, inside best practices, deal flow, obviously. But, so uh, we're, we're pretty happy. And that's where we stand right now. It's been a year and hell of a run. It's just the beginning. That's awesome. Amazing. So is it is it pre-seed, seed A or well, just seed, seed or what, what do you look at? Seed, but mostly seed, mostly seed. Very cool. What what would be like an ideal company to reach out to? <laughs> Obviously a profitable one, but you know, like what what kind of um, tools or infra can they be building? Because it's it can get pretty. It's a pretty broad category, or it can be broad. Yeah, I think you know it's uh, we you know co-founders. We don't lo we don't really like solopreneur. So you know, mm -hmm. two three people, one technical, one business uh, with a great idea, uh, MVP at least. Um, what you know possibility of doing demos test user or beta uh users and you know waiting lists or you know some sort of traction at least um i was a clear uh go to market in terms of you know how targeting their early adopters and a clear usage of funds so, so why they need our money so it's never fun to dilute yourself as a founder so if you're doing it doing it for the right reason so I would say 
that that will be where we want to invest. But you know, we want to know them before that. So that's the other thing I would say. It's knocking at the door of VCs when you need money. It might might not be the right time. I think you have to entertain the relationship before because at seed stage you're investing in people, right? You're investing in a team. So you know, knocking on my door, even if you've got a great track record and I don't know you. So uh, I prefer, you know, knowing people before what they work on, even if it's a napkin paper, a oh, great idea, you know, we can start, you know, working together and see if it fits because it's, it's, it's kind of a long relationship, you know, VC and startup. So um, yeah, that's, that's the way we're, we're approaching things. That's awesome. Very cool. All right. Sir, let's jump into the closing questions. And I th- uh, thank you for, for going over time. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've got, I still have, you know, maybe five. Okay, okay. All right. Are you an AGI doomer or optimist? Optimist, why? If you're a doomer, it's like, why do anything? I'm neutral. I, uh, I'm neutral on that. I'm neutral. I, 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 need more, I need more metrics. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Okay. What do you, what do you bearish on? What I don't like? Correct. Vanity entrepreneur. Ooh, okay, explain. People that are doing it for ego or think that an entrepreneurship is a lifestyle. I think entrepreneurs that are doing it for the right reason, trying to solve a real problem that are focused, dedicated. That's why I'm doing that business. I love those, 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 those type of entrepreneur. I don't like the one that are always going for the next shiny things or, you know, embellishing the entrepreneur, you know, way of living. I think it's, it's hard work. I value so much what they're bringing to, you know, our society. So uh, I would say, yeah, that's, that's why I, I, and there's a lot in, you know, let's, let's face it. There's a lot in our ecosystem. Totally. All right. What are you bullish on? Um, I'm bullish on emerging markets. Oh, tell me why. I think, you know, if you look at, you know, South Korea, I've been, I've been, you know, in a rabbit hole of just digging and digging and being so impressed how they turned from late nineties being, you know, poor country to now they're uh, part of the G- G20 and super dynamic country. People don't remember, but they, they called like Samsung Sam socks, like back in the days. And now you know, it's been a great company. And so, so you know, that's one. And Nigeria, if you look at Lagos, it's, it's pretty intense what they're doing. Uh, same thing with the Eastern Europe countries like uh, Estonia. So I, I'm, I'm really bullish on, on that. I think, you know, we're good. North America and Western countries like, yeah, 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 we're good. But I think it's, it's really interesting that what's happening outside the, of our little bubble. That's awesome. All right. Best piece of advice you've ever received or, you know, read? You know, getting a, like a balanced life. Um, I underestimated, you know, and now, you know, I've got kids, um, got a wonderful wife, got family, friends, got crazy job. Amazing. Uh, but you have to find a right balance. I think it's, uh, I really feel, and that's one of the things I'm looking now way more with founders as well that I'm investing in, what's what's their life looks like. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of intrusive, I know, but I, I feel it's, it tells a lot about a, a lot about someone. And uh, I know everyone's saying, I get a balanced life, do something, get hobbies, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's, uh, it's way more important. I get prefer people taking vacation and, you know, disconnecting and, you know, adventuring themselves, reading books and all that stuff and getting back to work with, you know, free mind. So I think that's one of the things I would say. Love it. All right, last question. What motivates you? Yeah, I would say in back. Uh, you, you know, I really like, I'm always impressed by people who change the world and in a good way, obviously. Um, and it can be artists, like the impact they have. I think artists, were the the biggest the most influential people on me because you know like uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails or you know per, Pearl Jam you know Eddie Vedder the, the the their lyrics and all that stuff it's more just the noise it's for me it's connecting with memories and it has an impact on me so and I think you know business and technology can do the same thing so I think it's really the impact that you know um, that and I would love to get an impact in the world and that that would be one of the most 
important thing and, and i'm trying to you know, teach that to my kids as well you know that you know in their community and with with friends and all that stuff it's you know how you can have a positive impact amazing guillaume sir this is absolutely stellar thank you so much for coming on hey, Andrew, that was fun. To reach out to you and chat and you know tell you about their company how should they contact you email twitter oh, or yeah where, linkedin uh what's it linkedin discord email um you know find me you'll you'll, you're, you'll be able to find me and um yeah would you know i'm always taking uh one-on-one so uh, so so anytime all right sir thank you i appreciate it we will uh, chat soon yep you're the best thanks see you cheers